<laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> what is your take? Turnips uh, versus parsnips. parsnips. <laughs> oh, good root vegetables. We're getting to the root of the problem here on the podcast. <laughs> the oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Or, or, or jicama. Oh. oh, yeah, like Hikama. Hikama wins every old time. Every time. time. Hikama tacos. Make some great pot stickers with Hikama. Oh. Mm. Hell oh, yeah. Yes. Stick them. Hell yeah. Stick it, flip it. See you later. Bye. <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, we are here for session zero of our forthcoming Daggerheart one shot. <laughs> um, if you don't know me, why not? I'm AK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. My name is Matt. Hello. Hey, I'm Seth. I'm Fitz. I'm Evan. What's Aww. up? We are the Pocket Dimension, and we are very excited about launching into our session. Uh, we're here today with some of our friends from Patreon watching live. Um, if the rest of the yeah. internet is watching this back later and sees us talking to people, that's why they were getting to be here live for it, and the rest of you get to watch it recorded back for posterity later. Um, and we're just going to dive right in, unless any of my fabulous party has anything else to say at this moment. Dagger hard is bad as hell. That's Let's all go. I got. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I, That's it. Dagger hard is bad as hell. I would like more <laughs> interpretive dancing, please. I was diving. I was oh. diving. Interpretive diving. <laughs> Crusting. Interpretive diving. <laughs> and then diving. <laughs> oh, <crusting. laughs> hey, I, I discovered something. I've been sleeping really badly recently. Yeah. And I, I normally drink decaf because I'm, you know, I'm kind of a cheap drunk when it comes to chemicals. <laughs> So today I was like, oh my God, I can't do this without some caffeine. So I had a real coffee and guess Whoa. what? Real coffee is like, oh my God, it's so great. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why you have a little bit extra pep in your step today. Why do you think uh, I am the way that I am? Because I yes. drink coffee every day. I used yeah. to, I used to, I used to love real coffee, but um, you know, it can kind of get me real amped up and oh my God. Who's running the yes. dance? <laughs> Welcome to the jam. Welcome to the jam. Welcome to the dance floor. Dance the dance, dance floor. Dance. Uh, well, we're going to go ahead and get right underway uh, with all of this fun. So I thought we would start out by telling our players. So for those of you who may be new to all of this, we have a homebrewed world called Saigea. For this mm. one shot, we will be traveling to a corner of the world called Sylvandria in the country of Calandria. Do I have to do that every time now? I feel like I've boxed yes. myself into a corner. Yes. Um, and the uh, the province in which our story will be set is called Moonfall. Ooh. And nice. So one thing that I love just out of the gate about Daggerheart is that this is a player-based narrative group storytelling TTRPG. So y'all are going to be making some decisions that will influence the adventure rather than just waiting for me to just spoon feed you everything as your GM. No pressure, Evan. Uh, we no have pressure. to be creative like a yeah. little turtle. On, on command? Creative on Sorry command. It. Be funny, oh, damn it. Oh, be oh. funny, be, Ooh, be that's funny. That's a lot of pressure. No humor, okay. no humor no here. No humor here. <laughs> 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 um, we don't... Yeah. Apparently that was no. funny. So yeah, that was I'm hilarious. Wrong. Yeah, Hilaire. When I was a teenager, I thought Hilaire was the right thing to say for hilarious. Oh, baby. Oh. Little baby Allison. Mm. Oh, baby. All right. your That's your fetch. Uh, yeah, ooh. I'm so sorry, everybody. All right, so let's hear a little bit about Moonfall. Uh, I've kept mm. it very loosey-goosey, but this may influence some of the decisions y'all will make uh, as far as uh, busting into your character creation. Busted. Perched high atop the country of Calandria, the province of Moonfall is a rich tapestry of diversity. From bustling market towns to tranquil hamlets hidden among peaceful forests, Moonfall is a place as varied as its inhabitants. Its rolling hills are carpeted in emerald green, and dense woodlands are alive with the whispers of ancient spirits. To the far north, a rugged mountain range scrapes the heavens. But it is under the light of the moon that Moonfall truly comes alive, as the province is renowned for its connection to the celestial realms. Druids, drawn in by the mystical energies that permeate the land, flock to Moonfall to commune with nature and unlock the secrets of the cosmos. They can be found in secluded groves, time-worn ruins, and sacred glades. Their presence, a testament to the province's deep-rooted connection to the natural world. In this place where moonlight falls first, the allure of the unknown beckons, and the spirit of exploration thrives. 
<laughs> but it's not a spooky place necessarily. It's just a very it's a it's a hippie dreamy kind of yep. dreamy place. Dreamy, there. That's a good. One. That's that's good. Yeah, I like that stuff. Oh. So altitude wise, it's it's up pretty high. Um, so they think that they are literally closer to the heavens <laughs> than many of the other lands in Sygea. And as mm. far as where it sits on the continent of Sylvandria, it is the easternmost point. So it is the place that receives Moonfall first. And that's actually how it got its name, because Moonfall's okay. first in this area. Um, and we'll see a map in a little while that it will, our players will be doodling all over. Um, but Great. first... I know I am very eager to meet and get to know who each of you will be bringing along for the ride. Um, and I hope that you, our dear listeners and watchers, are feeling the same level of excitement. I think I think that each of you guys, correct me if I'm wrong, have a base idea of the ancestries and the classes. I'm sorry, the base. heritage and the a base, base. So let's, very well, base. Matt, Matt, not to put you on the spot then. Uh-huh. But do you do you want to maybe share where you're at right now and and let the group help you kind of home in on more than the yeah. Base? We're all so about that base. so I, I just wanted to say a little bit like I, I am I am a forever GM so my my jam is always the lore and, and that's my favorite thing about everything and uh, so it is harder for me in in a lot of ways to be a player and to, to kind of put a, myself into a world. So I immediately want to know more about Moonfall and the, I want to know like, are there other heritages that are more prevalent in Moonfall? Are, are you know, I, I have a really good idea of what class I'm going to be, but, but heritage is where you're getting a little can, can you yeah. tell me more it's a largely nomadic people kind of come in and out and roam through mm. and don't necessarily feel tethered down in this place it is a place of high magic okay. um and so we do get to because we've got a sea coast where we might you know encounter some of our fungrels and our rivets um we of course do see plenty of humans of uh there's even fairies flitting about elves you know kind of your your standard races i would say uh ancestors maybe a, in here. maybe a gerblin or two maybe a gerblin or two definitely gerblins oh. and i mean the thing with moonfall too it's not a place where we've got like warring factions um and things like that so you don't have to feel like you have to be un undercover if you're any particular ancestry mm -hmm. you can kind of live out and wild and free Okay, I love that. So what were you like, did you have some things that were just like sticking out to you, Matt? I also love hearing what other people are doing so that I can kind of mm -hmm. also kind of figure out what the yes. backstory is going to be of them characters. But I will say that as as far as the, the heritage is presented to me at this point, uh, I do love this take on the fairy that Daggerheart mm -hmm. gives us. And I've never played a fawn, yep. which is kind of really fun. Uh, nor have I ever played a furball, mm. which is definitely in the in the realm of the critical role world, yep. I know, is more of a cow-like mm -hmm. creature yeah. rather than kind of a, a traditional giant. Irish yeah. uh, furball, which is just kind of a just kind of a beasty beast. Yeah. But I like I like that it's a cow. I will person. retract one thing I shared earlier, kind of looking through the specific Dagger Heart ancestries. Mm -hmm. I don't see a lot of clanks in this area. I was going to say, that would probably be one that d would not fit, feel like it fit. I'm not super saying never. Well. And, and yeah. when they're there, they're probably used as kind of guards and wardens uh, yeah. type of a vibe. Um, so you see less of them, but but not, not none, if that helps. Right. But yeah, fairies, hell yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I have uh, a thought. Well, please on, go thoughts on where I'm at with a character. If mm -hmm. if if you want a little more uh, other stuff to to ping pong off of, mm -hmm. um, the the initial sort of uh, uh, draw of Daggerheart to me, kind of seeing all this new content, all the incredible art that is mm -hmm. like so so much to me that's such a big part of games and comics and, and all of these things that I love um, and the uh, I, I believe one of y'all said it 
uh, in your initial live sort of talking about it is that it's it's a very magical, almost like whimsical, like like a the fantasy. It's like kind of like the the fantasy of it is sort of dialed up, yeah. and uh, which is everything I love about fantasy. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I grew up with um, kind of had that level of uh, whimsy and and uh, kind of fantastical creatures and people, uh, and so I felt very drawn to this this one type of creature from a book series i used to read uh and they're they were hammerhead goblins so uh mm-hmm. i think i'm going to be playing a goblin and uh specifically a hammerhead goblin is what i have in mind uh where uh the, the head kind of splits the eyes are sort of off to the side uh, oh. like a hammerhead shark kind of um <laughs> And so that is where I was leaning, just you know, okay. to give you the full backstory of how I got there. I love that. <laughs> uh, love it. That is uh, fun. That's kind of, I, th- that that's where I feel most drawn to. Mm-hmm. I think, Can they look like character. front and sideways? Like <laughs> that is a great question. Uh, <laughs> why not? Right? It's like Wally. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Goblin Wally. Yeah. Um, Eva. Yeah, I, I, you know, maybe so, maybe so. All right, we'll see. so we have, we've got a goblin on the table, a very cute hammerhead goblin. Okay. From... What do you what do you get for being a goblin? Oh, great question. So, oh yeah, I didn't think about danger this. sense. Uh, once per short rest, you may mark a stress uh, to make the GM reroll an attack. Oh. Uh, it says if it still hits you, reduce the incoming value by your proficiency. Oh, right. so, interesting. So, uh, yes. Well, you got those <laughs> eyes positioned to kind of mm-hmm. sense danger I know, right? yeah. <laughs> very, very easily. <laughs> uh, Evan or Fitz, have you guys had any thoughts about your ancestries? So we can kind of start oh, there. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes, yeah. they are. You guys are mm-hmm. excited. Tell well, me, tell yeah. me. Would tell you like me. to share with the class? Share sure. with the class. Sure, let us shall. Um, I'll go. I'll go first because mine's uh, less interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I, I am gonna go fungrel. Uh, I know. I know. I already made a fungrel, but I just every like whenever we've played on shard, I always want to play the little mushroom folk because <laughs> they just they speak to my heart. So I, I have mm-hmm. to go fungrel, which means so I get. Um, always connected so to speak with other fungrel across distance to access their hive mind of information make an instinct roll at character creation describe what ritual you must perform to tap into this connection mm. so I'm gonna have to think about that think about your ritual mm. yeah. yeah but I'm just a little little mushroom just a sneaky little mushroom I love how I don't creepy think I'm the sneaky, like fungal no, art loud. It is creepy. Loud, proud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is creepy. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Looks so Thank ominous. Uh, <laughs> uh, little a uh, creep, cute little mushroom, and, and uh-huh. Evan. What are what are you thinking about packing? Okay, so I've been doing some thinking, and uh-huh. Fitz has helped me out. But Fitz, Fitz, yes, ended my idea super hard. So originally, I was just going to go straight human. For this mm-hmm. and but Fitz, <laughs> <laughs> um, we all think it <laughs> well here's the thing uh my character's parents were human oh are human are human um but and i'm, I'm not going to dive too too deep into the backstory just yet but my character is no longer a human they are mm. now a clank. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, oh. So we'll, we'll we'll dive into the the whys and Lies. the whats in, in a minute, but um, should, I'm I'm pulling an Allison here, and uh, what does that <laughs> you, mean? Chaos. You said no clanks, so I'm going clank. <laughs> I didn't no. say no clanks. I said not a lot of clanks. <laughs> Minimal. Well. Clank. Uh, and and this clank is a little bit different. Is not he's is he is he they are not um, uh, a, a metallic robot automaton style. It's more of a um, nature based uh, kind of clockwork Smurf style. Not not Smurf in size, but uh, wooden 
Um, mm. Oh, cool. Uh, like vines, wood, Ooh. nature, clay, mud, rot, some all kinds of weird kind of stuff kind of mashed together. Yeah. Ooh, that's fun. Because I do, I do like that it says metal, wood, stone, and clay. So this, mm -hmm. so this is the first time I remember being able to kind of add golems into yeah, it's almost golem -like. pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Ooh, yeah, which is fun. I was saying when we were discussing it earlier that clank almost feels like the wrong title because they say metal, but then mm -hmm. they have wood, clay. So you could be more right. of a natural material forged. Well. Yeah being yeah um yeah. uh, mm -hmm. evan i chef's kiss well look you guys lay down the gauntlet play a druid and here i am i'm going to i'm going to do my best okay you guys, you're embracing the wood best. of the druid uh <laughs> <laughs> morning wood it's, it's, is, yes. it's their last name it's, yes. it's, 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 it's not a druid it's a drew wood um, <laughs> oh, you get a <laughs> nice. Um, all right, Maddie, does any of that help you reach? What What were you kind of thinking between? Um, I I I do know. I know I'm skipping ahead. I do know that I'm a ranger, okay. so I know that that can open up a lot of different possibilities there. Uh. Okay, so we are confirmed that Evan and Fitz are playing druids. Yes, that is confirmed. Matt has just revealed that he will be playing a ranger, Seth. Uh, I'm pretty confidently going to be playing a wizard. Ooh. Or, oh, or not oh. confidently at all. Fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, if you guys haven't already, go ahead and, and bust open those sweet, sweet demi plane um, mm -hmm. character sheets. So, does anybody have the first? I find this weird, by the way. We're in the feedback phase of the open beta, yeah. asking the name to come first. I feel like a lot of us are, are naming once we've wrapped our arms. Yeah, yeah. you've got go a name. Back. Okay, yeah, name. I'm about to say, but if you have names, let's let's hear them. My character's name is Holliver. Holla! Hol Oliver <laughs> Cinderthorn with an Ooh. E. And uh, he, he goes by Holly. Oh, oh that's nice. Oh, I love that. Holly is I, spelled like H O L I, H O L O Y. H O L L I E. I E. Like yeah. Holly. Okay. What is, what is Holly's last name again? Cinderthorn. Yeah. Interesting. So not Morningwood. <laughs> not Morningwood. <laughs> not Morningwood. <laughs> Uh, I, love I that. actually have a name as well, though. Uh, I don't know if we are crowdsourcing. That's the word, if right? You, if, if at any point you would Anything? like to turn to the chat, you may phone a friend. I know. I know my <laughs> my hammerhead goblin. I know her name is Dimple. Oh, yes. Stop it. That's Come so on. Uh, I have a fan fave thoughts on I'm last fan. name. So. Okay. Morningwood. <laughs> Morningwood. <laughs> Yeah, evening yeah, wood. It's evening that easy. Wood. Yes, um, mid, mid afternoon wood. Yeah. I don't know if we want to. Oh. Afternoon delight. Just wood. <laughs> That's just oh, just got to myself out. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Now I'm okay. singing Dolly Parton, so she can be Dimple Parton. Um. <laughs> so actually, actually, you know what? I'm sorry, chat. I I floated it there to you, but I think I think one is actually kind of calling to me. <laughs> Of sort of my snarf thoughts. Snack. Of course, now I'm thinking about snarf. Too many oh. cooks. Too snarf, 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 snarf for the win. Look Sorry. At the cat <laughs> oh god. Thank you, thank you, Jeff. Oh Jeez. man. Uh, I was leaning towards yeah. Muckmire. Ooh, Ooh, I like that. A little mm -hmm. goblin. -y. That's a great name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was that Muckmire. or Crud Crux. <laughs> oh, crowd crust. <laughs> Those are both great. Well, you know, if you have names that feel good and you don't use, we will be naming things on a map in a minute. So, Ooh, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Crud crux could be where someone's from or where you're going. A goblin or... village. Sounds like yeah. a goblin village to so, me. So, <laughs> yeah. Hold on to all of this. Um, okay, so are you going Mugmire, Snarf Snack, Crud Crux, or Option <laughs> D? <laughs> You know, what? I think I'm not gonna go. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna go snarf snack on the last name, but that I am, I am, I am going to use that. That is, that is. Um, That'll get there somewhere. I already somehow. know. I already know where that's going. Nice. Um. 
I, I think I'm going to sit with it, with it for a minute. Okay. If, hey, if the chat wants to vote on Muckmire or Crud Crux, go for it. <laughs> we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> all right. Cor- 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 uh, all right. So, uh, Fitz, do you have name thoughts? Uh, no. That's not Buttons. <laughs> I know, because I didn't use... So, button. I was thinking maybe buttons or, or dotty. Zipper. Um... Buttress. Buttress. Uh, no, I think right now the top tier are Button and Dotty, but I'm not sure. That could totally change as well. Okay. I might go, I might uh, I'm take a left okay turn. Coming back to names, I just feel like we don't know enough yet. Matt, any yeah. thoughts coming to mind, sure. or do you want to reserve the right to answer after we've done a couple more steps? As far as names go? Yeah. Uh, um... I don't have any... I don't have any ideas for names, but I, I am now... I also put it up to the die, and oh. indeed, Furbolg kind of came <gasps> came all out, right. which I feel is kind good. of I feels okay. really good. Okay, let's see. So we yeah, keep going. We've each picked our ancestries. Um, it sounds like we've got Furbolg, Goblin, Clank, Ungrel. <clears throat> the other aspect that we'll pick first is our heritage. So this <clears throat> is the community of which you are originally from. Um, the choices being highborn, loreborn, orderborn. Boy, this is really like, this is a good vocal warm up. Ridgeborn, <laughs> seaborn, slyborn, underborn, wanderborn, and wildborn. Around the rugged rock. <laughs> <laughs> the rugged born. The ragged highborn ran. Um, born yes. identity. So I'm not going to read through each of these. Is anything calling out to anybody? Yeah, seeing yeah. Seth nodding yes. Yep, I know exactly yes. what I'm going with. Yes. Yeah. Muckborn. <laughs> yeah, Muckborn. <laughs> uh, Mork. Mjorg. 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 <laughs> this was decided purely on art because I loved it so much. I knew I had to be a Seaborn. Ah. Oh, mm. Nice. Okay. okay. It may be too early to answer, so feel free to, to put a pin on this till later. Do you think that you might be from the coast of, of uh, Moonfall? Uh, yeah. I do think so. I was looking at the map a little earlier, kind of just contemplating that. Yeah. Okay. So planting that little pin right now, you will be naming at least one coastal town in Moonfall for us in a little while. So be thinking Mm. on that. Um, All right. So we have a Seaborn. Anybody else given any cursory thoughts? Yes. Great. Late on us. Um, Holly is a highborn. Okay. Ooh. Okay. from a family of of great affluence. Oh, okay. Um, Born into a life of elegance, opulence, and prestige. Mm -hmm. Ooh, prestige. Right. And um, is originally from an area um, called Cinderwood, which I think might be south of here. Yes. Um large expanse of uh of forest um and that's that's where their family i is see from. you evan i see you i love it i love What's it up? okay yep yeah that pretty much everywhere is south of of moonfall but yes we can uh get there all right so we have got a highborn and we have got a seaborn matt and fitz what y'all thinking I'm choosing between underborn and wildborn. Wow! I do like with wildborn though that I can like it. It allows me to grant that ability that I gain as a wildborn to an ally, and so knowing that Evan and I are coming in together, that that feels kind of nice. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I might go wildborn. Wow! All right. Wildborn, I've got an idea too. Seaborn, I think. Highborn, and Matt. Yeah, so I'm gonna cheat a little bit as uh, as the, as part of the co-creation of this world and say that uh, there's another there's another country called Valerian, right? It's called Valerian. And it, to me, Valerian seems like it is kind of it. A, a, a very orderly um, kind of uh, maybe the, maybe even the head of of all of Saigia's 
most um, judicial elements. Uh, and so I'm I'm thinking that this character might have been born in an order born sort of society, but uh, she probably is left because of that feeling of order and want and did not fit in. Not necessarily an I hate by where I grew up, but just a knew that there was something more out there, knew that uh, there was more of a uh, it was a call to nature. Brother? Am I allowed to do that? Yes. Valoria. Valoria. Sorry. Valoria. Thank you. Yeah. Without the N. Yeah. Amazing. Valorious. There's Valorious. Um, Valorious. Valorious. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm glad we were going in the, in the same direction. Okay. So I sounds like each of you guys now have your ancestries and your community is cho- have been chosen. I think so. Yeah. I think so. All right. And oh, yeah. you've each chosen your classes. Yeah. Which means, you know, then now we're going to start to to get into the, the guts of all of this. Um, oh, my guts. I would like to move that we move into the screen share portion of our time <clears throat> together today. Okay. Um, and have you guys kind of now each take turns walking us through the rest of your character build. So with that said, who wants to be up first? Uh, I have an idea for my Let's, domain I deck cards. I let's, care. let's see Evan. So kind of take us through. Uh, yeah. So we are now at the domain deck cards and your two domains uh, are Sage and Bone. Sage and Arcana. Sage and Arcana. Sage and Bone is Ranger. Sorry. Um, so I just expanded them all here and you don't have to choose one from, from either, right? You can choose two of the two same. Two from one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Holly is, is less Sage. Which is more kind of nature, even though they're they look kind of natural, but they mm-hmm. don't they're not embodying that so much. It's they're mm-hmm. uh, their sibling. Mm-hmm. They have a sibling who is still at home okay. and um, sort of lost to them. And um, so this this piece they they uh, can well in the description you have a personal uh, deeply personal token or trinket that can be infused with protective magic. Uh, and held as a ward by you or an ally, describe what it is and why it's important to you. Uh, when the holder of the ward takes damage, they can spend hope to reduce it by a D8. So it, it is a, uh, a token to remember their, uh, their sibling who is still at home with their parents. Mm-hmm. And um, so that just felt, I don't know that I would have picked that, except it felt story-wise based on the previous prompt. So I'm gonna go with that. Um, and then Unleash Chaos, also wouldn't necessarily have been my first pick, but given that they're young, they're not really fully in control of all of this new transformative uh, being that they become and the uh, the abilities that are manifesting. That felt like kind of a, an element of uh, uncontrollability that felt good for their mm. story. So I stuck with the Arcana domain for those two. How's that Amazing. sound? Nope, perfect. You chose ones that I was not playing. Somehow I knew Fitz was going to go Sage, at least for one of your cards, if not for both. I felt it in my core. So Evan, go ahead and now that you've made your two uh, domain deck cards, walk us into the next step where we will get your uh, experiences. And so, yeah, choosing your description, starting there. Okay. Why was the community you grew up in so reliant on nature and its creatures? Holly grew up in, uh, like we said, a, a... a well-to-do family. Their parents are druids um, of of a high order, and um, they didn't. They weren't raised to be a druid. In fact, they didn't even manifest druidic uh, abilities until kind of later uh, in life. But but their parents were very entrenched in a in a uh, community that spanned both you know, kind of uh, in the classical sense of, you know, a druidic circle, Mm -hmm. but also there's like a hierarchy, like, you know, like in church, there is, there's religion and then there's going to church to see and be seen. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's social structure to it. Uh, All the stuff that comes with a highborn kind of society. Um, So why was the communities you grew up in so reliant on nature? 
Um, it was just infused, right? Their parents, friends, and community were, for the most part, uh, druidic in okay. in in nature. Um, okay, what was the first bond you made with a wild animal, and why did it oh. end? Yeah. Okay, I'll go. I'll go there. So, so here's what happened. Holly was a human. Uh, they knew their parents were druids. They had a re- pretty normal life for a, a pampered, privileged kid. Um, until the day they discovered that, essentially, their parents were super villains. Mm. That their parents weren't just druids, but they were members of a, of a cult. Oh. And they found out this by kind of stumbling across their uh, uh, a ritualistic sacrifice that they were not meant to see, not meant to know about. And it was around the same time that they started to uh, present, started to manifest their own druidic ability. Their parents came to a crossroads. Holly had seen something that they should not have seen. Um, they were also very clearly going to be a druid, naturally, because of the order that their parents belonged to. They they could not not act. They had to do something um, because Holly was clearly not on board with this. They were uh, mortified, terrified. Uh, everything in their life was kind of upended. And um, their parents loved Holly very much, but they were also psychopaths, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um, and and completely devoted to their cult. So the only option was to um, to sacrifice their their child to this cult in the similar way that Holly had witnessed. They kind of stumbled across mm. himself. So that was the end of Holly's human form. Um, now wrought with guilt and um you know racked because they they truly loved their child in secret they decided to make holly again and they through their own kind of secret private druidic ritual rebuilt holly as a, a construct and hoping to modify their memory so that they would have no, 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 no memory of what had transpired, right? But to have their child back, and, um, and they could just go on as if nothing had ever happened. Mm. But Holly came back with all of their memories intact, and is now not a human any longer. Is not is kind of in this in-between world, fully remembers um, what had happened um, and had no recourse other than to run away from home. Um, and uh, this transformation both uh, kind of heightened and amplified their druidic uh, manifestation. Anyway, so they they kind of set off, they ran away from home, as it were. They became a runaway. <laughs> so. Which Cassie yes. already picked up on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Immediately, yes. Cassie yes. was there. <laughs> yes, Cassie. Uh, so the first and bond, I mean, so they were out in the wild, you know, just kind of existing. And their fir- the first bond, uh, I'm going to make this up on the spot, with a wild animal was a fox. Nice. Um, huh. And um, it ended... Um, it, why did it end? I think let's, let's just let's. It'll be somewhat sad, but but yeah. not not so crushingly yeah. sad. I think um, it was it's maybe in a drizzed like fashion, like a, a first fast friend that treated Holly with kindness um, as they were kind of wandering the wilds, but not lives that were meant to intersect and, and be together. That the fox had to go back to their life, right? right. And okay. who has been trying to hunt you down? Oh, take a wild guess. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Raise your hand. <laughs> uh, uh, they've been running from their parents the ever popper. since. Okay. And now we know what they want. Okay. Evan, gorgeous. Uh, very excited about Holiver, Holly Cinderthorn. Um, and you playing a druid. 
Yeah. Uh, feels so good. Feels great. Um, but a culty but a druid. druid. It's, it, you, yeah. I only expected and wanted the, Big the Evan spin on this. <laughs> uh, who would yeah. like to go next? Well, I, I'll go next. Then we can do the yes. druid duo. Get that out of the way. The druid. The Drow. So, <laughs> the domain deck. I'm going to pick um, Vicious Entangle. Nice. Because that feels right for a mushroom, especially one who's going to tap into the mycelium network frequently. Yep. Um, so, I'm going to choose that. And then I'm going to choose uh, Nature's Tongue um, because I just have to. Okay, so we've got two druids in our party, one going full arcana, one going full, full sage, sage for level one. Background question. So which, remind me which um, community you chose. Wildborn. Okay. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna sort of smoosh all of these a little bit together um, and parse them out. So my thoughts are that Dottie is from a community of fungrel who live on the edge of the cinder wood that sort of lines um just like right up right on the edge of it in calandria and um they live sort of hidden they're a very tight-knit group um they are very reticent of outsiders for the most part and that is because for a long time fungral were seen as like not good i don't want to say like evil or anything but like you know they tend to show up around decay and rot and so they got kind of a bad rap and um so they kind of hid themselves this little collection in order to survive and thrive just decided to sort of cloister themselves a little bit and were wary of outsiders so that's why they're reliant on nature and its creatures because they are a self-reliant society so you have to sort of you know be able to fend for yourselves and then i think though that Dottie was maybe a little curious you mm -hmm. know like to explore maybe as they got older kept pushing how far into the woods they could explore every day mm -hmm. um, before they had to come home. So um, just kept kind of going out and, and pushing those boundaries a little bit further and further and further. And maybe that the um, first bond that I made with a wild animal was was I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a liberty here and I'm gonna say it was the fox the same fox but but not in the same way that um Holly bonded with the fox I think it was a curiosity I saw the fox I had never seen one before and I just followed it and that's when I met Holly was following the fox mm. ah. so it's not that I became like besties with the fox it was that I was curious about it and Maybe I followed the fox for a couple of days, maybe a week. Maybe I was sort of like seeing Holly for, you know, I kept sort of following the fox and like investigating until one uh -huh. day I was brave enough to say hello Aww. because I'd never seen another creature, like a humanoid creature that wasn't a mushroom. So I was sort of curious. Okay. Um, so yeah, and then I think the trying to hunt you down question is more of, I don't know that anyone now is trying to hunt down my community, but I think that that fear, that like intergenerational fear of having been hunt down has remained. Mm. We will be healing some generational trauma in exactly. this campaign. <laughs> so Seth or mm -hmm. Matt, who wants to kind of do their show and tell of domain cards and background questions next? Do, 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 do. I can go actually go. Maddie's ready. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Boom, 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 boom. First off, this is this is Winrius Win Moon Dreamer, and. Uh, inspired by my friend Kai of they them uh when is is a um 
fur bulk that has black and white spots, sort of black spots on um, the Chick Fil A. Very pale. A Chick Fil A cow, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and so the two yes. domains that uh, that our rangers get to choose from are bone yes. and sage. So mm-hmm. Sage, of bone course, and sage. Overlapping with our yeah. yes. Benrith has has uh, I think I've chosen one of each. Okay. Uh, I like the idea of gifted tracker. And gifted tracker is neat because I can make a spell cast roll, and I ask the GM one question. One one thing about this game that I'm learning I really love is the interaction between players and GM. It's not that 5e doesn't do that, uh, but I feel like this game really leans into some of those things. You know, in 5e, it's going to be your... When you get into certain spells, like... What's the one that Ash always has? uh, Where you can, like, check on your patron. Dial up your patron. Oh, yeah, yeah. Commune? Yeah. Commune, right. So this is... uh, But I've, I've seen a lot more of that in this game, which I'm... I love. And... But yeah, if I spend... Hope that I can kind of really f- track somebody. It's fun. It's rangery to me. And then uh, there's uh, on the bone side, which I know I don't have to choose nope. from. If you want, but uh, I wanted to get a little balance. And even though a furball is sort of cow based, I just thought when is going to be very nimble, a nimble furball, and uh, I can use this for evasion. So. Uh, I'm very happy with my choices so far. Let's see. What terrible creature hurt my community? Uh, m- my immediate reaction is is going to be something that would take me, also would take me to the wilderness, take me to Moonfall, would take me some sort of beast that that broke its way into this extremely orderly world and just you know, like a kaiju or something. <laughs> like a full-on kaiju is just like destroying parts of Wynn's uh, world, and Wynn's like, I'm a, uh-huh. I'm a go. First kill almost killed me too. What was it? And what part of you was never the same? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I think. You know, th- though I often dip into the world of sad, I won't go too sad, but this might be the saddest thing. But I, I'm going to say that the first kill was a um, uh, a, a deer, honestly. You know, Aww. deer can be kind of kind of scary and uh, this deer did almost and 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 Wynn had to really like wrestle with the idea of going from all food and everything being taken care for them Mm -hmm. into a world where they had to like, you know, fend for themselves. And, and, and so it's, I I would like to say, you know, native um, thankfulness for uh, anything. I mean, you know, they're, they're a ranger. They kill things all the time. That's, that's their job, but have this kind of uh, desire to, yeah. be grateful for anything that gives up its life for them, especially sustenance. Uh, traveled to many dangerous lands, but what is the one place I refuse to go? Badassia. Badassia, just for the name. Just for the name. It just like, it does not seem interesting. No, I'm kidding. Uh, one place where would refuse to go. I, I would actually say that probably a lot of people outside of Tataria do not want to go to Tataria. Yeah. It does not sound like a wholesome place for uh, uh, creatures of varied mm-hmm. um, ancestries. So I would say that that Wynn is not interested in Tataria. Goodbye. Goodbye. Amazing. Yeah. And then, yeah, you'll think on your experiences. I mm-hmm. love all of this so far. Uh, good, good job, GM, as a player. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Some really Thanks. Yes. Cool stuff. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, amazing. All right, Seth, you ready? I'm ready. Do it. You ready? Let's turn Matt. Boom right. saw. Oh, we, we went. We went <laughs> 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 Uh Yes, it did go Muckmire. Dimple Muckmire. Who? Hello. <laughs> All right, um, so what are the two domains that wizards can choose from? So Splendor and Codex okay. are the two domains oh. you can choose from. Uh, Splendor is kind of the, I think, like, Seraphs have Splendor as well, maybe. 
uh, right. kind of like the like. Well, it seemed like there's a little bit of healing, a little bit of uh, kind of light and that kind of stuff. Codex okay. uh, is books, <laughs> books, <laughs> books, 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 which is Dimple's entire thing. So I went all Codex mm. here. Okay. All Codex uh, all the time. Feels right. These are grimoire cards. Mm -hmm. So. Wait, so is Matt the only one that chose one from each domain and everybody else went straight single domain? Mm, I fun. love that. I love it. All right. Sorry, sorry, Seth. Please Ooh, continue. Yeah. No, Tell you're us good. About Book of Ava. Uh, Book of Ava has a lot of. Uh, a lot of these uh, feel like just flavors of DD spells. Yeah. Uh, so we've got like uh, uh, Thunder Wave kind of vibe uh, with like some, some armor. You can. Uh, spend hope to give a target you like you can buff someone's armor uh next time they spend an armor slot like they they reduce it by more um and then ice spikes so so uh ice, ice mm. spice ice spice the, yes <laughs> the, the, the long forgotten spice girl yeah. ice spice yeah. ice spice is a, is a is a real artist oh, oh, ice spice. you're right you're right no. sorry uh ice Showed spikes my age there are kind of just like a, a cantrip spell. Okay. Um, a vice. And then uh, she's also carrying the book of Iliad. Iliad. Uh, so it has like a slumber. Slumber spell, arcane barrage, mm. which seemed very magic missile -y. You can kind of mm. spend uh, a, you know, varying numbers of hope to deal more damage. Kind of like, uh, and each one's kind of like a, a missile. Uh, mm -hmm. And then telepathy. Uh, I like this one. I think I, I don't know if she's realized that she's been using it. Uh, kind of in, in studying this book, I almost feel like she's thinks she's like talking out loud to to uh, <laughs> snarf snack uh, or something, but kind of doing it mentally. So that would make sense. Uh, yeah. yeah, we'll see. We'll see where that comes from, but. I, I can open a line of mental communication with one target I can see, and it is just connected until I connect with a different creature. So Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's going to cool. be fun as hell. Yeah. So those are the books, two of the books she's carrying around with her. Um, and then my background question. So uh, some of this, I picture Dimple as almost like, Relatively recently, sort of out of college. I don't know what uh, what age that is for goblins, but you know, mid twenties, kind of. Um, uh, still a lot of sort of like uh, sheltered innocence, kind of. Uh, and so I was kind of having trouble with some of these questions that I read them. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll see where stuff lands. But what did your community uh, used to count on you for? and how did you let them down? Um, I think part of that, the community she's a part of being seaborn, um, probably has some sort of, uh, right, like agriculture, or it, it's kind of, her town is sort of, I think, relied upon for okay. maybe a specific... Uh, Export? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Having to do with like the, the sea, uh, and, and maybe it's uh, some specific sort of clams or fish or wildlife of some sort or uh i don't know maybe actually maybe something a little bit more fantastical sounds mm -hmm. a little bit more fun uh, i think fantasy clams yeah fantasy clams um uh, yeah maybe they produce some sort of uh <laughs> pearl that uh is is highly valued for arcane casting or, or something like that what if yeah. there was a part of the world that had a little that the clams themselves there was like an enormous amount of cold a night yes. like under 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 uh, under and the clams had kind of grown kind of like, in yes. so they're pearls I love just, that just so yes. see, stop me please yes. stop please. Me. This, no, is, no, this is where pearls of power come from that's what I want it is, folks. Yes. <laughs> so I do think she was expected to fill a role in that uh, within her community and has just dived fully into her books and kind of her sort of just uh, maybe unrealistic sort of uh, just uh, fantasies within her head. Um, that's where we bring us to bring us to the second sort of question here. You've spent your life searching for an object or book of great significance. What is it and why is it so important to you? 
I can't, I don't know if I can pinpoint like something specific at this point, but I like that sort of clam coldenite element. So I'll think on that a little bit, but I do think she's sort of, uh, almost like, you know, isn't just reading books for knowledge, but books to escape and, and kind of just living in her head a lot of these Mm -hmm various adventures or or whatever else just kind of daydreaming a lot um about that stuff and you know kind of wishes you could just jump into uh some of these books and kind of live in those experiences so um maybe something to do with that but i'll I'll dial that in uh and i do have a a powerful rival who are they and why are you so determined to be their Mm -hmm. end uh yeah devil and I kind of feel like this might be like a little bit of a childish one for her. Uh, it, maybe it was some sort of school competition or something, but I do think the rival's name is going to be Rorick Crudcrux. Uh, <laughs> of course it is. So <laughs> I don't really know the what is. The, the second X? <laughs> <laughs> the second X, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. There's an H that's silent in there. It's C R U H X. H X, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Crud yes, uh, yes, even better. Crud <laughs> <laughs> uh, So yeah, I don't, I don't know what her beef is with with Rorik right now, but uh, I do, I do believe that that is her, who she considers her rival right now, and I think it's a little bit like, uh, you know, she's still growing up a bit. <laughs> Amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, All right. I did. So, sorry, I did slack on the background questions a bit, but I do think I have one experience. So I just dropped one experience out there. If you want it, yeah, give us a sprinkle of preview. Um, To to sprinkle, yeah, a little preview. And I think think it's going to be, maybe I'll change the name, but Anxious Charm. Uh, So just like (laughs) her like nervous energy is just charming uh, to people. So. Sweet That's, little anxiety I think, I think baby. that may be... Uh, she has big, bless like your heart Allen's energy. It's like Woody big Woody energy. <laughs> bless your heart. Bless your dad's heart energy. Allen. Yeah. I was just going <laughs> to... Let's call it what it is. Millennial. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> yep. yeah. Oh, man. Every, a lot of I millennials should be able to right now. We, we, I, I am. Millennial. Or seen. Three of us on yeah. this are millennials, or so I will seen. not. Gen X, baby. Yeah. I, baby. I do feel. I'm technically a zennial, but I'll claim millennial for this one since mm. I launched that attack. <laughs> Damn. Let's start with you on the connections. I'm a, okay. so keep your screen share because what we're going to do for this part is kind of start to popcorn around. Okay. So what the way this is going to work is, Seth, you're going to ask your first question of someone else. Fill it in. Then we'll have that person, and it doesn't have to. It's not like we have to be fully balanced in all cool. of this, but right. uh, until everybody's um, are filled in. So, which question would you like to ask, and who would you like to ask it of? Okay, mm-hmm. I'm just going to go down the line here. Uh, the question is: What favor have I asked of you that you're not sure you can you can fulfill? So you're asking this question. Another player's going to gonna answer it. Yes. Yeah. So you're choosing who you want to ask. Trying to of. decide who. I would be most likely to ask a favor of. Um, I'm gonna say, when? Yes. I'm gonna say when or Winnie. Is that is that what mm-hmm. you said? Not Winnie. Not Winnie. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> Dottie. They Winnie, go by Win Polly. or Winnie. I just know there's a lot of E's in the, in the oh, group. Oh, okay, so. okay, okay. Yeah. I got you. I missed part of that then. I was <laughs> just really distracted. That's actually the favor is that you wanted to call them Winnie. And uh, <laughs> So, no. when what favor have I asked of you uh, that you are not sure you can fulfill? Mm-hmm. What favor have you asked? I'm not sure. So I think if this helps sort of maybe prompt mm-hmm. something, uh, mm-hmm. I think uh, Dimple has freshly left her home, mm-hmm. uh, kind of mm-hmm. these, this seaside home, um, and is really doesn't know what the fuck she's doing <laughs> Yeah, out in Moonfall. Yeah. Yes. Well, so I'm getting the idea that we're kind of all runaways of some sort oh. I don't know if I can speak to to uh, 
to fits his character as much, but there's a there's kind of a runaway character for all of us. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I was gonna kind of dive down some of that path. Um, I would say, so a touchy subject for when is is kind of um, to be put into a position where they have to act as leader because of their background. It, it, the, the whole point of them becoming a ranger is, is to is to be not antisocial, but to kind of like set out on their own. And I, I feel like, I feel that maybe Dimple has, has maybe kind of pushed when into being more of a leader at times. Okay. And that is just something really hard for Wynn to accept. So maybe like uh, has asked for guidance sort of in in kind of uh, navigating, uh, you know, the world and yeah. beyond yeah. Her, her sort of shelteredness. Nice. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. How does that feel? I like it. Okay. Yeah, great. All right. Beans, so beans, Matt, beans. I'm now going to bring your screen share up. And so okay. you are going to choose your first question mm-hmm. and who you would like to ask it of. I'm going to ask this of uh Fitz, tell me your character's name again. Dottie. Dottie, right, thank you. I knew it was an E. Uh <laughs> what friendly competition do we have, Dottie? Hmm. Love this. What friendly competition? Well, you're nimble, right? I am pretty nimble. Um yeah. I think that Dottie also considers themselves to be, um, if not sneaky, uh, uh-huh. uh, quick and and likes to hide, uh-huh. but is also very childlike. I think Dottie is very young. So yeah. I'm thinking maybe we are big fans of sardines or hide and seek, but like two a toxic competitive level of it that like we will sneak off and hide um, and like have to be the best at it. Have you ever seen the Pink Panther series from the 60s, 70s? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> Pink, so <laughs> Clouseau <laughs> and, and Kato, mm-hmm. where yep. they, they literally like they lie in wait for each other in their mm-hmm. own home to yes. try to kill each other. Yes. Uh, yes. Fitz, thank that you. You great. just wrote the beginning of the adventure. Nice. <laughs> All right, which means it is time to bring up Fitz's no. screen. Uh, who would you like to ask? So uh, I'll continue the I'll continue the round, Robin. How's that? Um, so I'll go to I'll go to Eva next. Mm-hmm. Um, how about? What affectionate nickname have you given me? Um, Aww, I love that. Um, <laughs> While Evan thinks he's the one that gives our characters adorable nicknames in other campaigns, so I feel like this is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you can't um, just call people their names; it has to be something else. Right, but it's also really Cute. driven by like knowing Histor- more like, people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Um, so I'm going to do my best here. Let's see. Uh, uh, gosh. Would it be helpful for me to give you some characteristics of Dottie? Yes. Okay. So, so Dottie, um, is very curious, um, leaps before they look, um, is not super great, uh, when it comes to, um, coordination, but it's okay. It's okay because they're round. So if they like fall off a tree or something, they just sort of bounce, and it's okay. Um, I think they're a little skittish, but when they make friends, it's very, very um, important to them. Very deep connections, um, and uh, I think they have some like sort of weird quirks, like maybe they poke things with their stick a lot. Um, they like to tap in. Here's a big one. They like to tap into the mycelium network frequently and just eavesdrop, see what they pick up on. You know, okay. that kind of thing. Okay. Interesting. Um, gosh, there's so many, there's so many 
I mean, this is the here. thing that you do best, Evan, as a human being. So, I mean, I, I feel like you're going to have so many nicknames for everyone. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's probably more than one here. Yeah. Fun, fun girl, I think. Uh, <laughs> Tapper. Um, we're going to go with, I think number one is Tapper. Tapper. <laughs> Tapper. Both, both with a stick and with uh, the mycelial mm -hmm. network. Oh, yeah. Like uh, let's go with Tapper. Let's tapper. go with Tapper. We'll go with Tapper. Tapper. I love that. All right, Evan, you are now up to ask a question <laughs> of someone uh, else. So I'm going to bounce this right back to Fitz okay. and, and Tapper. Uh, what <laughs> did so part of, part of we kind of uh, connected a little bit before this and decided that Dottie and and Holly knew each other when Holly kind of escape into the wilds of the Cinderblood and then on and on and upwards to wherever uh, Dottie's home is. Um, and both coming from a Druidic background, a Druidic family, and, um, you know, we don't necessarily have the, the, the specifics of how this came to be just yet, but that Dottie and their family took Holly in and accepted them. And kind of beca they became their their extended new family, and um, uh, so th they kind of became close sibling like. And so, what what did Donnie confess to Holly that makes Holly leap out into danger for you every time? Boom, flip it. So, what did I confess to you that makes you jump out in front of danger for me? Yep. Yep. Okay, I think. I think this works out well because I think had Holly not come around and Dottie's, you know, the Death Camp family, if we hadn't sort of taken Holly in and truly accepted Holly as one of our family members fully, um, that I think Dottie had a, has always had a natural curiosity and has explored the woods further than anybody else in their, their community, but I don't think Dottie would have left if Holly didn't leave. Mm. So it's almost like a a situation of ho if something were to happen to Dottie, Holly would have to go back and tell their family oh. what happened. Um, <laughs> I think I will ask. Oh, okay. I'm gonna, we're gonna, we're just we're doing a, the Uno sort of <laughs> situation. Cause reverse, I'm gonna, reverse. Yeah, reverse, reverse. I'm gonna ask when, what animal do I tell you that you remind me of? And it can't be a cow. <laughs> uh, a Dalmatian. A Dalmatian, okay. Uh, yeah. That's not how you spell Dalmatian. There you go. <laughs> We're not here to judge spelling, promise. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Does that work? Mm-hmm. Okay. I like it, because of your spots. Mm -hmm. We have we both have spots. That's not I know. I love Body. that part. Oh, th that makes it me. Let's see. Dimple, what what have you asked me to keep an eye out for? And why are you worried about it? What have I asked you to keep an eye out for? And why am I worried about it? Uh, Ooh. Hmm. What have I asked you to keep an eye out for? Okay. Uh, I've asked you to keep an eye out for a uh, small red and brown salamander. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um because I know it's like the familiar of Rorik Crudcrux. Ooh, that is good. Are you a game master? <laughs> <Really good. laughs> Sowing some excellent seeds for us here. Love that. Uh, okay. R Rory, it's, say, say. Uh, Rorik. What's his name again? Rorik. Rorik Crudcrux. Yeah, thank you. Crudcrux. Yeah. That's amazing. Ooh, strong. Ooh, like um, is it is it premature to do like a li little role play from Dimple's side? Okay, 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 okay. I and Liam had an Irish accent like two, two minutes into the, the system zero, so I don't know. Hey, uh, 
Hey, you win. I was I was wondering, could you like um, could you like keep an eye out for like this this little brown and red salamander, please? Cause this real big douche, his name's uh, Quirkrux. He's like oh, probably keeping an eye out for me, cause he hates me, and he's a real jerk. So just if you could help me with that, that would be awesome. <laughs> okay. Salamanders, Thanks. got it. Okay. Salamanders, got it. Uh, okay, thanks. Freaking endless inspiration <laughs> yes, for you. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, with that amazing role playing that we've now already had, uh, Seth, yes. you're up for a question. Okay. Ooh. All right, I'm going to ask this to Dottie. Okay. Dottie, what secret about yourself? Have you trusted only me with? Oh. Okay, so I think everybody knows that I like to tap into the mycelium network. Okay. Whether it's for uh, for fun, you know, just to like chat with folks or to eavesdrop, but I think maybe um, Dottie let it slip that very specifically they've been targeting they're tapping to see if they can listen mm. for and figure out who Holly's family um, yes. used to be and and maybe if they're after Holly. Nice. Mm. Love it. Mm-hmm. Trying to info gather. Beautiful. All right, we're Scrub back. the network. Mm-hmm. We're back to Fitzy. I think this is your final question. This is my final question. So it's going to be back to you, Ooh. Seth, because I've asked one of, of both Ooh. Matt and Evan. All right. So uh, what did you confess to me that makes me leap Ooh. out into danger for you every time? What did I confess to you? Uh, tell me a little bit more about your fungal family. I didn't pick up everything you were saying about... You said it's pretty secluded, Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's basically a little tiny Smurf village of mushrooms okay. in the forest <laughs> that, like, if, if an animal yep. or some type of humanoid comes nearby, we just sort of, like, hide in plain uh, sight. So it looks maybe just like one of those little fairy villages. Yeah. <laughs> but it's empty. Yeah. Instead uh, of the Smurf village, <laughs> uh, like, the mushrooms being the houses, the mushrooms are the people. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and, and also the houses. And also the houses. Right. <laughs> so this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I kind of, uh, some of the background questions sort of fell into place a little bit for me. I think um, the thing that Dimple is sort of searching for is uh, kind of more information on Coldenite, on these pearls, these these uh, pearls that the clans uh-huh. are coming up with. and. And while she's neglecting the like duty, like the job basically that she's expected to fill, her so much of her focus is kind of gathering information on that to more understand it and potential uh, sort of uh, remedies, perhaps to some sort of nefarious thing that is affecting her sort of uh, seaside town, uh, maybe like an algae or something, or, mm-hmm. or some sort of. I'm thinking some sort of natural sort of growth that Mm -hmm. may also be sort of at least a concern or something y'all are aware of or something. And so maybe Mm. you know that I'm kind of trying to find, maybe I don't know that that's something you are uh, concerned about, but you know that I'm trying to find a cure for this thing. I don't know. Is this, is this like, (laughs) I see where you're trying. I see where the connection you're trying to make is, and I'm trying to find a way to yes. And you here. So I think what you're saying is like, maybe there's some sort of invasive species or something, or something that's threatening your magical clams from your home that maybe could be some sort of variant on what might be threatening my village. Yeah, and I guess that's not really a confession. That's not like something that. Um, but what are the links so. that you would have gone to? Maybe that's. Oh. Like maybe that's the tie into your backstory about right. why you didn't continue the family business. Right. But you're trying to protect them. Yes. Just to jump in with y'all here. Mm, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, mean, maybe. Oh, okay. Okay. How about this? How about there's some sort of uh, fungus that is infecting the clams mm-hmm. like 
They're fine in the water, but somehow during transport, there's this fungus that is like taking over the clams and basically making them useless once they okay. get to a certain point or something. And ooh, okay. Um, it is similar to a uh, a type of fungus that um has maybe rotted off parts of our mycelium network or something or like Ooh, or corrupted okay. it or like disconnected us from yeah. other types of mushrooms other parts of the forest yeah we're getting yeah. we're getting fungal interference fungal from this interference. sort of <laughs> weird um maybe it's sentient i don't know like some mm. some sort of nasty fungus that okay. our family doesn't doesn't jive with and they're interfering with our connection and it's also spreading on your clams Okay, so this is my confession then. This okay. is my, my confession. It's my confession. So like, okay, um, look, you can't tell anybody this, okay? Okay. But I have to freaking tell somebody, all right? Okay. Because I, I just can't just live with it anymore. Mm-hmm. But I stole a book. <laughs> I stole a book, and it's a really important book, and there's this, this kind of gunk that's sort of futzing things up where I'm coming from. <laughs> And I think this book is the answer. And it, I, I really, like, but I stole it, and that's, like, scary. So, uh, you know, uh, but please don't tell anybody. I just uh, had to get off. Okay. Out of, you know. I won't tell anybody. Okay. I won't tell anybody. Okay. Woo! <laughs> I feel much better. Thank you. <laughs> My God. That's I all love. I did. Dimple and, so and much. Yeah. With that, yeah. we are up to Dimple's final question. Hey, wait. Whoa. Okay, so this question is for Holly. Holly. Uh, to Holly. I.E., right? You said I.E.? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Wait, and Dottie is why. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing that. Oh, okay. um, I'll fix that in a second. Uh, so, Holly, what weird hobby or strange fascination do we both share? Oh, perfect question for y'all. Oh my gosh, what weird hobby? Oh gosh, <laughs> this is the worst question to ask me because I know <laughs> that's why I asked. Just you. gonna get gross. Ten percent weirder. <laughs> Do it. Hundred percent. Hundred percent weirder. More disgusting. Do it. Yeah. Uh, what weird hobby or strange fascination do we both share? Um, it's, it's definitely collecting something. Okay. It's no. not taxidermied animals, though, right? <laughs> no. Or duck or busting. Duck busting. <laughs> it's not duck busting. <laughs> um, no. Okay, Javelin is saying insect collecting, but let's let's make that let's yes and that into something weirder. Um, what weird hobby or strange fascination do we both share? So we we like to collect insect. Okay, no, that's too weird. <laughs> um, uh, we like to collect insect mates, but not to kill them and like pin them on a board, but like keep them alive, maybe? Okay. Like. Um, to you're, study. You're breeding, breeding, like, insects? Like breeding like, insects? insects? Bre- oh, oh, yeah. Let's make it weirder. We're trying to crossbreed <laughs> insects. That, yep. Whoa. Oh. Fascinating. Okay. All right. There it is. <laughs> crossbreed. Okay. <laughs> All right. We are back over to Evan. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, brother, sorry. Your character's name Wind. is Wynn. Wynn. Thank you. Uh, what affectionate nickname uh, have you given me, Wynn? Ah. And why is it moss balls? Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um uh, let's see. Um, I I think I think that uh Winrieth when uh calls Holly the kid, which yeah. which can take a whole number of okay. of connotations, both like because you are 
the youngest of us, but also uh, because you have proven in stressful situations that you're kind of uh, the one, you know, you're like the kid. How does that suit you? Sure. Evan, go ahead and ask your final one and then we'll kick it back to Matt just for time and for okay. sake. Uh, um, so, Seth. Yeah. And, sorry, your character's name is... Uh, Dimple. Is Dimple. Sorry, I knew that. That's okay. Um, I don't think I've asked one of you yet, right? So what, Doesn't look what like animal it. do I tell you that Ooh. you remind me of? So what animal do you tell me that I remind you of? Correct. A tree frog. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nice. So now I believe Seth, Evan, and Fitz have filled out all three answers. All right. Yeah, so Matt, we're coming left. back to you. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yes. And this this should probably go to this should probably go to Holly. Um, and I, I definitely want you to have um, uh, whatever you want to say is going to be is going to be uh, canon. But I also have an idea if you get stuck with this one, because it's kind of intense. W- huh. Holly, why do you act differently when we're alone than when others are around? OK, well, you've already piqued my interest with your yeah. your idea. So let's hear it. So I, I had some ideas. Uh, I, I know that I said a, cr- a kaiju level creature attacked my, my mm-hmm. home. Uh, I kind of twisted that a little bit to be a a um an evil fey mage or so, you know something possibly even related to your parents cult um created a ginormous golem that smashed through the city mm-hmm. uh maybe maybe not god god gojira sized but but like enough to do damage. And so I meet, I meet Holly and, and I don't know whether Holly might know this, but uh, I, I left my town to kind of hunt down this, this group. And um, instead of a deer, I think I, I turned them into fawns. I think that there's a pack of fawns that also follow this mage, which kind of would then point them to druidic a base as well and so you know you've kind of got when a hunter that is sort of maybe hunting down you know possibly a group that's related to your family it sounds like what this creature that that destroyed your home was also construct in nature yeah, golem, full golem, yeah. And or a construct, yeah, exactly. So that um what both there's maybe there's a connection to uh some kind of dark druidic past, but also were uh you are extremely uncomfortable with um this thing that is seems very clearly connected to evil mm-hmm. on it. Uh and and uh, I'll yes and that to Holly is part of their personality and their maybe melancholy is not the right word, but um, anxiety is that they are they are fundamentally connected to this mm. evil. But there's a part of them that is is evil, right? They are connected mm. deeply to. So uh, if 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 Wen has openly shared this part about their past with Holly, then that's they're probably secretly or openly harboring f- deep fears that they will either become this, that that's their destiny mm. or, you know, who knows what. So it's a, it's a, a two way street of, uh, can, can win really trust Holly mm. and can Holly really trust themselves? And how, how much does win trust, uh, how much does Holly trust when to not um, judge them for know, that? If, if or mm-hmm. judge them or even further, like if it came down to it at the end of the day and when had to choose uh, Holly's life over something else, where would, you know, 
on what side would win land. Mm, I love it. That's cool. That is cool. Amazing. Okay, you guys. I think that's everybody's questions, right? So four, we've never really done a proper session zero. So this has been this is the most of... satisfying session zero, <laughs> just in general. It's super I mean, fun. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really it. well. The onboarding, like I keep saying, you know, the Shiny. game may fall apart. I have no idea, but <laughs> the yeah. onboarding is really nice. So we have this world, Saigia. We played our first campaign in a corner of the world called Tataria. You've just heard uh, recently Matt's character, was it Wen, who said that they do not like anybody from Tataria? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Scary place. We've, A-holes. We've, we've mm-hmm. played a, a, a DC-20 one-shot in a corner of the world called Tethesia. Uh, When the Adventures of Bud and Herb comes out, you will find that it is set near Moonfall. They share the same country of Calandria. Um, But this is really exciting and fulfilling for all of us because we get to kind of build this part out together Um, Mm -hmm. instead of me just like slapping a map down and saying, deal with it. Um, (laughs) So (laughs) deal with it, suckers. Um, Okay, so if, if memory serves, I think we only have one native of Moonfall and that's um, Dimple, is that correct? I am, yes. Okay. Everybody else is from other lands, I believe. Yeah. Just totally fine. Um, so, yeah, I've given my players access uh, in um, our... We're using Owlbear Rodeo for this, and you guys are able to scribble on the map. Uh, to your heart's desires, we'll take a scribble. screenshot, and then we'll... Yep, Evan's going to write us things like he likes to do in our daily stand-ups. Don't you worry. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, so this is kind of yours. So, I, you know, we are we don't need to roll any kind of initiative or anything, but you know, do you want to take it away first, uh, Dimple, and, and choose a place on the map and name it where Dimple might hail from? I, and then we'll kind of layer in. Yes. I think I know where Dimple is from. Great. Um, and I'm thinking... Da, da, da. It would be kind of right in this area. And yeah, by the way, so that little island off the coast, that is kind of the the easternmost point, and that is a barrier island of Moonfall. Okay. I love it. So okay. would you like to do the honors of naming that barrier island? Ooh, so. the barrier island. Oh my goodness. And you're from that kind of channel in between? Yeah, the channel in between. So I'm thinking that... I would love to name the island. I'm thinking for the channel in between. This is, I picture, um, look, I don't know how clams are found or anything. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you're about to learn, uh, buddy. Well, you're about, you're, uh, you're about to decide, yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how clams are found in the real world, but here, here. in Detect uh, magic. Exactly. <laughs> um, that is true. I picture uh, Dimple's uh, little town area village as almost like these sand banks um i think some of them sort of break the surface of the water um but just this area where uh the sand kind of comes up uh and there are different little structures on them um some are built on stilts and whatnot uh but i think there's always a few areas where the sand you know no matter the tides there there's sort of sand breaking in these areas so uh, I was leaning towards sort of her home being called the Sand Glades, uh, as kind of like you know, uh, like clearings in a forest. It's like these sand clearings uh, within the the waters uh, okay, there, I and I like that being sort of sandwiched between the yep. the barrier island and, and the main continent. Um, so the question is, you said uh, very lunar. And don't feel married to that. I mean, everything in Moonfall no. is not. This is not a, a you know corporate organization where yeah. everything has to be branded. No, but I, I like the idea of that, of that barrier island being significant in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, let's just top of your little bar. Yeah, and right in here are the sand glades. Yeah, got the sand glades. I love that that area off the coast. All right, so that is beautiful. Uh, named a couple of things already. I love this collaborative storytelling um okay so next thing i'd love to do so these mountain ranges at the very very north that's the one that's like the highest peaks Mm. um and and you know kind of stretching towards the heavens which gave a lot of so that is something i would like to be on the um you know on the lunar side yeah um 
I like that. Any, any, I, this is a group question. Any ideas there? Maddie's got one. Uh, how about this? The Doinil Range. Doinil, ooh, I love that. I didn't come up with Doinil that name. Range. Uh, I, I've just been playing with like, uh, w- w- Welsh Celtic sounding things in my brain, and it uh, just kind of looked vaguely. Killed. And say it for me one more time. Uh, you're the GM, but I I, I could hear Dwynil. 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 Mm-hmm. Like almost, it's almost like Dwynil. Dwynil. But some Ancient people. Ancient Elvish? Sure. Ancient Elvish. Dwynil. Okay. Dwynil. In one of the versions of our maps, just not in the one that made it here, there were some sweet little trees kind of surrounding about three quarters of this lake at the the foothills of the Mm -hmm. Dwinyl Range. Uh, I I foresee that being some kind of forest. Um, Do our our druids want to name a forest of Moonfall? Yes. And Evan, if so, you're free to draw some little trees in there while Fitz thinks real hard about the name. Well, can I... Can I... Can I name the other forest? Is that okay? You can, yeah. I have an, Put our stamp on Greenwood. If this is Greenhaven over here, or Greenhaven, then sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say that this is the edges of the Cinderwood. Okay. Where it like Ooh. creeps, okay. where the Verdant Valley like sort of creeps into Windwood a little bit. Oh my. So I'm going to place um, Dottie's little village here. Go ahead and draw, like, draw on it. If draw you it. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. I'm going to. Oh, can I do a little spot? So this is Spog. Dottie's village here. Oh. Actually, you know what? No, we're gonna put it here. There's a nice little. Uh, there's a nice little clearing right here. This is Dottie's village, and we're going to call it Spotsylvania. Is that acceptable? Spotsylvania. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. It's perfect. Ooh, the Crescent Wield. Oh. Who, oh, yeah, who, who yeah, gave yeah. that a name? That's Evan. Evan That's for that? sure, Evan. The Crescent Wield. So those are that mountains as well? Fantastic. What's that? No, those are trees. The blue those trees. trees. Yeah, Got it's it. a forest. So it's, it's a crescent shaped forest around this lake. Beautiful. Because the lake yes. needs a, a name as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, moon in another away. version of this map, I did actually add trees. That yeah, didn't, I, it just didn't save. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm glad that you added them as well. Uh, that that feels right. Two on the um, nose. That's two on the nose. I mean, Ooh. dang, Ooh. this is a fun part of this. <laughs> how about how about this? <laughs> this is a cool part of the game. Ooh. There we go. Okay. Love it. The rest of Moonfall is up for grabs. grabs if there's somewhere, yeah. something you want to draw, something you want to add, something you want to name. Um, Let's see. And I think my final kind of parting question to y'all is, is there somewhere on this map that is calling to you for where you might have gathered as a party and where you where you might currently be? Ooh. Yeah, we need it's a little got, town. Is it yeah. a big city? Probably need at least one, a few different s- sizes of towns. Not all of them, but is there a capital of Moonfall? God, yeah, it's got to be. It'd probably be in that that high, high peaks, right? You think in the Dwynil Range? Because their whole deal, Moonfall's whole deal, is oh, being able you're to closer touch- to the moon. Yeah. Oh, feels pretty uh, sick to me. So I, I will share. We haven't. One thing we have are still in uh, the process of is developing the pantheon of this world. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but I will say that obviously one deity that is very important to this area would be kind of the moon goddess Selene. S e l e n e. D i o i n e. It's actually Celine Dior here. <laughs> Celine. What if the city's called Cell? Or okay. Celine. Or the seat, the seat of Celine, or something. Ooh. Seat. Ooh, yeah, the seat for short. Or seat like of Celine. 
Ooh, cute can I just word. say I also like Galaxy's suggestion of Starfell Lake, mm -hmm. which mm. maybe 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 that's an informal yeah. name of like the the myth is that a star fell from the heavens Ooh. and yeah. impact oh. cratered this lake. Yes, which is why it's filled with seawater and not fresh water. Damn. And yes, Celine is taken very liberally from Celine. Yeah. <laughs> we're not we're not straying too far here. No, I I love that about deities actually, how it's just a different name. Yep. A lot of times. I love Starfell Lake. That's really, really lovely. The seat of Celine. Maybe that's maybe Duanil is the elvish word for Starfell. Perfect. Mm. Perfect. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, so uh, sorry. Where, where? What are we? What are we doing? So we're placing where like the capital city is and what it's called. Is it some kind of you know? Are we going with the seat of Celine? Whoops. That's not uh, where I wanted to place it. <laughs> we're we're deciding where in we want to place right? it. Um. It's up to y'all. You were saying if you want in it in the peaks somewhere? or the valley or where you think it'll be Ooh. best. I mean, it feels like to me they would be at the highest peak like in Moonfall. Top that was like leveled. Yeah. 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 With like a like city a on it. Mexico City. Nice. Uh huh. Nice. Love it. Love it. Do y'all want it. it like on the coast or like central or near the lake? The lock? I like, I mean, you get that sweet, sweet moon reflecting off the sea. Ooh, yeah. It's closer to the. To the and, or, or, or to the lake. Maybe the lake has or some lake. kind of oh. significant. If that's if there's lore about the, uh, the 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 stars falling and creating this lake, maybe that's. Maybe that's I also like. Power, kinda. Yeah, I also like sell as far as, um, uh, you know, it's close to the word sell sol, salt, water, mm -hmm. saltwater lake. Star fell, and and you could it could be like the name could be the seat of of Selene, Selene, but people could call it the cell for short. That's fun. Oh, uh, sorry. What are you saying? I'm saying that uh, that that our that our friend Seth suggested the name of the city be Cell, which I think is neat okay, as okay. a nickname. You know, like the ATL. ATL. <laughs> so, but, so, but, the, the but the name is the Seat of Selene. Yeah. Seat of Seat, Seat of Selene. How do seat you spell Selene? S E L E N E. Selene. Gomez. You need an apostrophe in there for good measure. Sure. Yeah. Where does it go? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And done. Right, and there it is. And there's Cell <laughs> right there. Cell. Love that. I love it when the plan comes together. <laughs> See. All right, Evan, where did you want it? Where do you want it? You got to decide it, where it's going. Oh, gosh. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm kind of feeling like looking down upon this lake and the forest. Like yeah. there's some kind of yeah. circle of power involved there. Mm. You have the circle of the lake, the circle that's completed by the city and the crescent wheels. Mm -hmm. Crescent fresh. It's right in this area. Does that feel right? Or I guess places where, you, where you're thinking. I'm thinking like this one, right in the middle of here and here. Yeah. And then it creates a, closes the circle. Mm. Beautiful. Love it. And so the, the name of the city is the Seat of Sal Saline. We is also right? have a I like that. have requests in the chat for Cellspire. Ooh. Ooh. That feels pretty I good. I like that. On nice. the, like on a mountain? Like, uh, yep. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, who did that? Cellspire. Tabletop Phoenix. <laughs> Cellspire is pretty, pretty fun. Mm -hmm. It rolls off the tip. Yeah, like Cellspire's good. Yeah. So that that replaces the seat. I, I think maybe the seat of Celine is kind of the what you were saying. Like the, the area. The gov yeah. 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 Or like the, the governing body. Government. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The seat of power. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, so seat of Celine is yes. Perfect. I hope it's cool. I'm changing your trees to green. 
I was just going to say, whoever's recoloring the trees, I appreciate you so much. <laughs> and, I, and I'll I be like, I didn't to... even ask. I, was... <laughs> I love it. No, it was. It's been bothering me, and I, you're just scratching the itch. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. This is why we're all friends. Um, <laughs> I'll be able to add these trees to the official map as well. Yeah, so, amazing. but I, I also like your hand drawn ones. Um, so, uh, I, I, I would like to vote for a town that is nestled in within the crescent wield mm -hmm. um that could that be a fun place maybe at yeah. least where the adventure starts if not just where home base is for us um how does I that feel like feel? that maybe a little makes... coastal town it's on yeah. starfell lake yeah yeah Sweet little perhaps coastal town. like maybe here. yeah i was just gonna say like what mm -hmm. if it we can see cell spire like in the distance yeah across the way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like that makes a lot more sense for our characters to to start in a smaller yeah. settlement. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And what's that place called? Um, you said something about quiet little town, which made me think of wicked little town, which made me think of mm -hmm. wicked. So what if we called it Elfie? Elfie. Elfie, I like that. E L P H I E. Short awesome. for Alphaba. <laughs> Elfa. Elfie. Yeah, or Elfa could no, be cool I'm... too, but I like Elfie. Elfie. I went from about... Hed... I went from Hedwig to Wicked. I don't know. <laughs> How about put the the mix up the syllable, the emphasis, Elfie. Elfie. Ooh, there we go. Yeah. Elfie. I like that. Okay. So where is Elfie? So Elfie. Uh that's It'll be right there. Okay. Love it. How's that spelling sit with you guys? Let's see. Yeah, I like that. I like this a lot. This feels good. Elfie. Love that. I, lo I love Drink that it. Seth is doodling the, just... the funk. <laughs> The I'm fungal just... infection. That's <laughs> infestation. Is... Infestation. Oh, yeah, I was. I was like, athlete's foot along the coast. What? Uh -huh. I don't know. I'm sure there's a, a name for it. I just couldn't come up with one. So if someone wants to name the the fungal invasive species, that... yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope it's cool. I'm just dropping some fungal everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Spores. Spores, 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 spores. Well, we got one small town, one big city. I feel like that's a great starting point. There's, there's other small and medium-sized towns, of course, all over the place in Moonfall, but that feels like a good start. I'd love to see what, like, I'm thinking maybe down. How do I show y'all things? Down, like down here, might be one of the ports. Mm. Do we want to give a port a, good... a name real quick? Oh, I feel like that, yeah. you know, just if we, uh -huh. or maybe even, what if it was? Well, I, I, I know why you want to put it down there, also, but uh, just uh, the connection to Luna Island. Um, oh, yeah, do you think Luna... it needs to be more like up here? Well, I'm thinking, yeah, uh, like if. Um, it could make sense because the sand glades is where they harvest this like cold and night uh -huh. these cold and night clams and then export it from wherever the port yeah. port is. Yeah. So you need a like a harvesting city, a port city. Well, what if we had it kind of be at this point right yeah. here? That Perfect. feels like the right place for a port city. So what are we going to call yes. our port city? Port um, turnip. Port. Port turnip. Port parsnip. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Pickema. <laughs> poor poor Parsnip gets my vote so far. You gotta have something cute because y'all brought cute little characters. Did we? Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, I, I I suddenly I, I I must be hungry for Mexican food. <laughs> I suddenly thought like the the piers of Pilsend with a D. Not just Pilsen. How is that spelled? Uh, let's see. Of Pilsen. The Piers of The Piers of Pilsen. Like Pilsen? <laughs> South side uh, of Chicago. Say that, yeah, say that exactly. one more time. Uh, P-I-L. 
Uh, S E N. Hold on, sorry, hold on, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yep. All right. Br- brother, yeah. would you be open to a yes ending of yeah. um, kind of mashing the peers of Pilsen and the word port into Port Ilsen? Yeah, I love it. Port Ilsen. Port oh, Ilsen. Yeah, that's cool. And it's so also I, a little bit close to island, and it's geographically next to an island. Yes. Ooh, love that. So like this? I'm yeah. thinking like the Seattle of... Exactly. Moonfall. Yeah. God, All right. Seattle. I threw There's... a little city down here. <laughs> do we have any, do we have any <laughs> in the members of the community that live in Seattle? Can I come and visit? Uh, uh, we, 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 we also, we don't have to do this today, but this is like, this needs a bay name. Yeah. Along with another major port city that is mm, like yeah. directly yeah. supplies yeah. this unnamed yep. mountain range, or it has a name. What is that? Daggeron? <laughs> I just put that down there. I love Take it or leave it. <laughs> Crazy boy. Is that boy, a city goose. there, or is that the mountain range, the Daggeron Mountains? I was thinking a city down oh. sort of in the depths of the mountain. Oh, like, like in the ve- like, in, like the in the veil here. Yeah. Oh, the veil. Yeah. Oh, sister cities, one in the valley, one on the coast. One on the coast. I love that. Mm. I love map building, so I could just yes. keep going. <laughs> so if that's You'll Daggeron, have do we have like Hartana? Like, how else do we have? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Negative inspiration. <laughs> he started it. Oh, Jeez. <laughs> wow. I didn't Yeah, either. but I didn't, I didn't connect that until I didn't did. either. I thought that's what you were <laughs> going for. I thought that's no. what you were going for. So I was just gonna. I was yes and no. so because it's dagger on the heart of the veil. Yeah. Oh. 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 You know what? You know what? <laughs> uh, now I want to change dagger on. <laughs> I mean, I, I I wouldn't mind just going Bay of Saline. You know. That's too. Yeah. That, oh, okay. What? But down there. Well, it's a it's the biggest bay uh, on around. And are we are we still spelling it S? <laughs> it's too close to Celine. Is my worry. We have Saline oh. and Celine. Oh, oh, that's what I meant. I was pronouncing it. Say Celine. Uh, oh, bay of well, Celine. Not, but like salty. You're saying like, salt. Yeah, I thought you were saying yeah. salt. No, you no, I meant bay. like bay like this goddess's bay. Like this yeah. is. But I, I, I'll think of something else. Um. Yeah. Spice Bay was the next place that I was going, Galaxy. You know, S- Spice is Ooh, life. Fear is the mind killer. Okay, what about, <laughs> what about, what about, thinking of the different, like, moon options, right? What if it's a uh, Hunter's Bay? Like a Hunter's Moon. Uh, like a Hunter's Ooh. Moon? Yeah. Um, we already have a crescent um, wheel, um, right? Um, yeah. Um, yes. Hunter, Hunter's Bay. So what are the bay. different, or Blood Bay? For a blood Ooh. moon. Yes. Uh, if we want to go dark with it. Wayne Bay. Always. Wax Bay. <laughs> the Wax Bay. The Bay uh, of Blood. Um, Super Bay. <laughs> Harvest Bay. <laughs> I don't know. Apogee Bay. Bay. My Bay Bays. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. It's Moira's Bay. <laughs> Gibbous Bay. Personally, I like hunt. I like hunter. The bay, bay of hunters, or hunter bay, whatever. Mm-hmm. What's the what's the elvish word for hunter? I mean, I not that we have to go question. deep on elf lore. I but. like that galaxy saying blue moon bay, which is making me think of blue cheese, and everybody knows that the moon is made of cheese. <laughs> Damn straight. Bay de, de fromage. Yeah, I think we do. We have a cheese <laughs> castle anywhere. Is is there a primary a an, ancestry who who lives in Moonfall? Game master. Is there a uh, dominant ancestry? Um, we can we can go ahead and pick one. In, in other parts of this world, such yeah. as Tataria, we know that elves are really extremely rare. They were um, they left those lands a millennia ago or more. They were kind of kicked out, um, and but they 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 did uh, they they relocated elsewhere. Not mm-hmm. saying that's here, but what if it was? It yeah. would be pretty cool. 
I mean, it was, yeah. This place does feel like El- Elvish is, is the easy one to lean into. The other, like, maybe it's not any particular, but, you know, this is where a lot of the col- the Galapa, the Katari, the Fawn. Um, maybe it has a strong rivets, the, connection you know. to the Fae. So maybe, you know, mm-hmm. being close to, it's also close to, you know, celestial powers and things like that. So maybe the veil is just generally thin here between. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. So I'm I'm cool with it being elven. Okay. You know, elves people think elves are boring like humans. They're I not. Know. They're super I cool. I, I, I love elves. elves. I have to fight cool. to not it's be class all the time. Classic. Classic. Cla- they're classic. Yeah, classic natural. cool. It's your um, damn straight. All right. Ooh. Errol's okay. Bay. DT Errol's says Five E yeah. translator says uh Elvish for yeah. Uh, I like uh, DT, why don't you phonetically pronounce how you think that is pronounced? <laughs> yes, is it Errol? Is it Aral? Is it Aaron? Is it An- <laughs> is it Anus? Anus. Ooh, Anus Bay. <laughs> Anus. Here we go again. <laughs> Here we go again. We have to have like nope. one thread from the last one shot carrying to the next one. Mm-hmm. So this could be Anus Bay. Toby Bay. Tobey. <laughs> Tobey. Okay. Aral. Aral. And the R is rolled. Aral. I can't, I can't roll an R, though. Aww. It's okay. You could add an apostrophe into that, too. Just get we'll real spin. spicy. But, you know, just liberal with the apostrophes around this map. Aral. <laughs> Aral Bay. Uh, I like it. What do you guys think? Me, too. I'm into it. I like yeah. it. I like it. Oh, I love it. And it's Aral <laughs> Yep. Bay. Yep, yep. Yeah. Okay, so what's the name of this city nestled here at the base of uh, of these mountains? Toby's Keep. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cutlass Keep. Mm, I'm changing Dagger on. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you like Dagger? <laughs> Ooh, Cutlass Keep. I we like that that's like maybe it. not even a city, but more of like a stronghold. So. Yeah. Mm. Uh-huh. And I certainly do like... Like it's a pirate. Fitz, do you want both? Dagger on and Cutlass Keep? I mean... Uh, what would you do? Ooh, and Could it you're be... giving me some strong pirate vibes. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Could it be Dagger on's Keep? Like, he's the pirate? Yeah. Oh, it's a pirate name. Oh, I, I thought this was going to be the fastest part, and I underestimated <laughs> I, us. Well, I, yeah. I mean, I, I should probably call this at some day. point. I mean, I think yeah. we, we, yeah. you know, we've done a lot. We've done a um, lot. Yeah. We could just sit here and keep going for hours, I know. and, and I don't people ever stop. will just yeah. be falling asleep. Yeah. But <laughs> look, I'll just like, leave this this uh, link open, and I'll mess with it. Over there. Yeah, <laughs> it's just gonna be decked out and stuff. <laughs> We're gonna come back. When y'all come back, it's gonna be, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I'm so yeah. here for it. Um, all right, Man, so freaking cool. Uh, that was awesome. Yes, uh, and thanks, y'all, for all of these amazing suggestions and help oh, naming stuff. That makes so it fun. so much more fun to do yeah. it with you guys. Uh, so, what's next? Are we? Well, yeah. I think what is next? This is it. We're gonna just press pause on yeah. on this and come back yeah. to. It. Okay. Great. Yeah. Oof. Love uh, it. Yeah. I hope cool. that this has been helpful what for you, GM, like to further fine tune your your one shot, and it certainly yeah. has. It's it's actually been like all weekend. I've wanted to write the one shot, and it's I've had to like push pause on that yeah yeah knowing that you guys are going to come up with some good stuff so i couldn't get down any road before actually talking to y'all which is kind of mm. the whole point of all of this is that it is collaborative narration it sure is sure as heck is i like i also have to say this is really 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 successful on Albert rodeo mm-hmm. yeah what a fun i mean Albert has glowed up hardcore yeah hardcore um, I uh, will tell you one of the things we were talking about in our Discord today was like, are people going to use anything for virtual tabletops for the, like the action tracker and tokens mm. and fear tokens? Right. Um, and so I'm interested, like once we get to a, a place mm-hmm. where Foundry and others are rolling stuff like that out, but I will go ahead and 
tell you guys that I ordered my tokens today and I went with little star and moon shaped gemstones. Ooh. Ooh. I need to go find some stuff. Yeah. So I will I will have those I'll basically some people in Discord have said just kind of have a couple bowls for each and designate mm. a shape as a thing. So it's like, you know, stars will be your action tokens, which will get converted into moons as the fear tokens. Oh, and I'll have like a bowl for each, so I get can a box your, of lucky charms. Put your snack bowl yeah, right? on the other yeah. side of your. <laughs> I want desk. fun yeah. things. I want to yeah. spend two dollars and eighty eight cents on Amazon <laughs> to get me something weird and that I'll never use except for this one game. Well, Druids can just go in the backyard and get some sticks and rocks. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> As I showed y'all, like I am already a, a kind of a crystal girly, so like the need to order more crystals. <laughs> Yeah, not a problem for you. Of not not a, problem. a problem for me. So, um, well, yeah. Thanks for spending some time in Moonfall instead of in Barovia uh, yeah. with me today, friends. Yes. Yeah, yes. this is our normal day to fight Strahd. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. This was super fun. This is so I've fun. ever had. This is the most fun I've ever had with a session zero. For sure. Because it's the only yeah. session zero you've ever had. In fact. Well, no, that's not okay. true. Okay. And and but I I want them all to be like this from now on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and you can you can tell. I feel like there's a little bit of DNA. Uh, Seth and I got to do a, a session zero for Blades in the Dark the other day, yeah. and there's a little DNA in this from yeah. that where Damn. the mm -hmm. first the the official first session of the game is doing this and that if i really got that feeling today yes yeah, mm. yeah. i did too um it just makes it i'm i'm immediately more invested in this oh, yeah. world by doing this with you guys so mm -hmm. i'm excited uh i'm really so excited. fun yeah 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 really really well done i mean i i, I give this i give dagger heart an a plus for the mm -hmm. a plus the plus and to a the plus gm plus. for setting this up Props, 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 Somebody called y'all early. They were like, it's like the Wiggles or the Teletubbies up in here. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Santa's <laughs> reindeer. <laughs> yeah. On Dimple, on Holly. <laughs> on Dottie, Dottie and Wynn. <laughs> oh, no. Yep, yep. Oh, boy. Uh, I no. cannot I wait to see <laughs> where this takes all of us. Um, I have to go learn a Welsh accent. <laughs> oh, wow. Ooh. Good luck. I Those know, are tricky. Luck. Yeah, that's All right. Well, thank you, friends. Thank you, friends, for tuning in. Thank you, friends, for yeah. watching this later. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, we will see you very officially in Moonfall very, very soon. Very soon. Yeah. Very soon. Whee!